just a minute. Okay, so let's start with today's session and I welcome our resource person, Dr. Naveen, Kuma, uh, Naveen Gupta, sir. Dr. Naveen Gupta is a distinguished educator and thought leader in the field of computer science, widely acclaimed for his transformative contributions to education and pedagogy. A recipient of several prestigious awards, including the National ICT Award from the Ministry of Education and the Delhi State Teachers Award 2024, Dr. Gupta is celebrated for his impact on curriculum design and instructional innovation. He has been instrumental in developing computer science curricula for premier educational bodies like CBAC, NIOS, and NCERT, shaping the learning experiences of countless students. He is also part of the AI teacher advisory in curating the grade 11 and 12 AI curriculum. Dr. Gupta has significantly advanced teacher professional development, having trained over 25,000 educators worldwide. His research work has been featured in leading international journals. Dr. Gupta has represented India in educational initiatives in Sri Lanka, Singapore, and Bangkok. His unwavering commitment to nurturing young minds and empowering educators continues to inspire and guide the academic community both nationally and internationally. So uh, that's so nice, sir. Uh, a lot of feathers on your hat. So uh, yeah. let's get started. Over to you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Marin. Thank you so much. So stop sharing your screen. I'll share my screen. Sure. Okay, teachers, very good evening to everyone. So now, good evening, sir. I hope my screen is visible to everyone. Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay, great. So this is a Python programming two session and 27th September. So I want uh, the session to be very interactive. So for that, you need to join me for this classroom so that we can interact using our presentation only. I won't go to the chat window of uh, the Zoom. I'll be having all your questions, answers within my presentation only. For that, what you can do, either you can scan the QR code or you can write classpoint.app and enter the code 39388. So again, I'm saying, what you can do, you can just enter this code and you will be like, first person has joined AK. You write your original name. Classpoint.app39388 or you can scan the QR code as well. You can scan the QR code and you will be part of this presentation and you can see you need not to take any screenshot. You can just directly download the screen from your class point. So it's very easy. What you can do? You just need to scan the QR code. So we got 12 participants. Great, 14. So it's very simple that you write classpoint.app39388 and you will be part of this presentation. And you can interact with me within a presentation only. Your all questions will be visible to everyone. Whatever you write will be visible to everyone. So we got 26 participants. It's very easy. You can scan the QR code or at the same time, you can write classpoint.app and you will be part of this presentation. I just give a star to everyone, those who have joined, 32 people have joined this. So it will take a minute. You just write classpoint.app on the browser and it will ask for the class code. You can write 39388. 
or you can just scan the QR code. So you all will be the part of the presentation. In Zoom, we have 96 people and 37 have joined this. The people are still joining. So Marin, uh, during the session, you can ask them to join. It's very simple, classpoint.app and 39388. The code will be always visible on my right corner of the screen. Sure, sir. So I'm just starting the session and it will be a very interactive session. So keep joining the session. Thank you so much. Let's start with the session. I'm giving a start to again. So 45 people are in my classroom. Now, the question is why NumPy, Pandas and Skitlearn plays a very, very crucial role in a artificial intelligence in Python. So Python have a, what is the advantage of Python? Python has a rich of library. So we can do a work with AI with a Python. So we have a three libraries called NumPy, Pandas, and Skitlearn, which will be used for machine learning. In this session, we are going to learn all this practical oriented session. Now, write which part of the country you have joined us. So please see your mobile, its screen changed. You write your city name, from which city you have joined. Pune, Ludhiana, Delhi, Triputi, Hyderabad, Gurugram, Abu Dhabi, great. So across India, people have joined Mumbai, Varangal, Srivendram, Chennai. So write within a presentation only so that it will be recorded. So somebody has written a hi. I'm just removing the hi. We want a city name. So please be careful while writing something. A. Anuradha has written hi, so I don't want any of the things which is not required. So please be careful while writing something. So Behrampur, West Bengal, Chennai, Kerala, Bhatinda, Ludhiana, Andhra Pradesh, across India, people have joined it. So, so many people have joined from Delhi. Seven people have joined from Delhi. Patras, Batinda, Mandi. So, you can unmute yourself. Somebody is, uh, so you can mute everyone during the session. We'll take yes. the question at the last only. Yes, yes, so I have I muted have... everyone, sir. So, great. So you can see uh, that we have people from across India, from north to south, east to west. People have joined us for this session. Thank you so much. So I'm just closing this. So I'm not respecting anyone writing something which is not required. So you can see here people are writing something. So I've just removed their art. Okay. Great. So rate your knowledge. How you rate your knowledge in NumPy and Pandas? One is lowest and five is the highest. If you feel that you are very much comfortable in NumPy and Pandas so that we can plan the session accordingly. So I'll say Write on the window only so that we can see the response and then we can. We got 18 responses. One is saying A, one people is saying B. Yuri, madam, is the best in the pandas and 
and people says that they are just a new learner as well. We have few new learners. So we have a mixed badge. If I see the graph, so people with a medium, people are 17, 13, and 10, those who are not aware of what is a pandas. So 52 responses we got. Thank you so much for your response. So I'm just staring. Great. Next is how many of you are teaching AI? So the next question is how many of you are teaching AI? If you are teaching AI, say yes. If you are not teaching, no. How many of you are teaching AI in 11 to 12? So 19 people are saying they are not teaching and they are just joining the session to learn something. And one is saying unassured. Unsure. Bhuneshwar. Okay. So, so many people out of 53, 32 people are saying they are teaching Python. I hope this are, these all are good in Python and they are satisfied with the curriculum change. So that is 30, 23. So good number. So people are teaching AI. So I'm storing all these responses for the future reference. Now, let's start the session. Now, why NumPy? When I say NumPy is a numerical Python, it's a library for computation. As you know, when we talk about artificial intelligence, wherein large number of data is required. If you have a large number of data, then we need to work calculating some statistical function. So that is what the numerical Python, the full form of NumPy is a numerical Python, which is a high performance scientific computing library. It stores the data into the multiple dimensional array and it can work on the various fast operation like linear algebra and Fourier transform. It means this is a library purely for mathematical calculation only. Now, what are the key features of when I say, because if you see the curriculum, the portion which we are talking about in calculation part, which uh, is there in the curriculum, it's a very normal and a very simple ways we have included NumPy and a Pandas. Because why pandas is required? Why numpy is required? Because when you go for the high level machine learning, that calculation needs to be done by the program. So what are the key features? Fast array operations. So it means you can do indexing, slicing, reshaping of data set, mathematical function, as I said, linear algebra, random numbers, statistics. Broadcasting is another feature, wherein you can change different shapes and avoiding a loops, you can broadcast the data. So that is what the key feature of numpy wherein we just do the calculation. Now, why pandas? When I say pandas, so panda is a data analysis library. Again, whenever we talk about the data that is available on the internet, we get a CSV file. And this data is normally have certain gaps. For example, you are filling up a form and you are not filling some data. So for me, the data is not complete. So pandas is a library which clean the data first and then according to the data, we can analyze something. So the first step in for the for purpose of pandas is cleaning a data and transformation. That's right. And the third point. So missing value we need to handle. Sometimes for missing value, we can give a mean value or some kind we can say an NA can be filled with a zero. So that is what cleaning of our data. So when we talk about a data available on the internet, for example, if I'm getting a data for movie prediction, which movie will work for better? According to the IMDB, let's say recent examples, all the old movies are being again released on the theater. So that is what data we are getting the prediction. So that is what data cleaning and how data poured into a two form series and a data play. So that is what tabular data structure with the rows and a like a spreadsheet. That is what pandas is. The features of pandas data frame and series. Working with tabular data structure like spreadsheet, 
and missing the handling values. Because when you download some CSV file from the internet, so the data are having incomplete. So we need to fill that values. So that is the purpose of missing data handling values. Grouping, merging, and joining is very easy in Pandas data set. That's available in Excel as well. But again, the Pandas library can be implemented with a Scikit-learn, wherein we can predict some prediction for some data. So that is what the feature of Pandas. So let's learn the practical portion for this Pandas. So I'm just changing my screen with a practical portion, then we'll go with a, so this is my screen. I hope it is visible, my screen. So this is the Jupyter Notebook training session AI class 11, NumPy Skit Learn. Now, what is the session highlight was written on the PowerPoint. So first of all, what we need to do, we need to install the library as I am using a Jupyter Notebook, which I have downloaded it's an offline Jupyter notebook. So whenever I suggest something, whenever you install the Python, never ever click on add path. Click on the add path option so that all the libraries can be implemented in the same way. Let's say if I go to CMD, let's say I'm using it ideally. So I'll go to CMD and let's say I'm using normal. So I'll, if I write pip, my pip will work in case it is installed properly. You can see my pip is installed. So pip is a prefer, preferred installer program, which help us to install any library in a Python. So as I said, Python is a rich of library. It means any library in ideally you want to install, you need to write pip install numpy. In fact, if I'm using Jupyter notebook, all these libraries are default available with Jupyter notebook. I need not to install again, but still I can write pip install numpy. Or if I have installed in my ideally, again, Jupyter notebook can be installed like this way. I can write here pip install Jupyter notebook and I can write install my offline Jupyter notebook, which will be available to me. So if I say Jupyter notebook, it will be installed. So here we go. It says unknown. And how to start? I write always when I start Jupyter Notebook. So my Jupyter Notebook starts. Two files will open. One is this command prompt automatically. And Jupyter Notebook normally starts with browser window. So you can see here once the Jupyter Notebook started, it will be visible like this. So I've just created a file new. Here is a file new. So this is a file new. I've created a new notebook. And the purpose of new notebook is that I can share this notebook with anyone at any as a PDF file. I hope it is clear to everyone that uh, Jupyter notebook, uh, that how to install the libraries. PIP is preferred installer program, which help us to install any library in a Python ideally. You can use any other software, Anaconda, you can use uh, Thony, there are multiple software on which you can install Python and this library. Now, as I said, numerical Python. So whenever we need to use any library, we write import statement. And as NP is my object or a alias name, and when I run, nothing will happen. So NP is my object name, which can be any name. I can name it N, I can name it NumPy. So here in, if I'm writing name import numpy, so what will happen? I need to write numpy everywhere. So I don't want to write this. So I've created a small name called NP. So I've written here import numpy is NP so that during the code, I can use a short name for numpy library. So numpy. So NP is my alias name or object. I can say num NP dot array. So what is an array? If we have uh, all the teachers have studied this uh, C++, so we have a concept of arrays, which is like a list in Python, which stores the data. But if we are talking about NumPy, the whole data will be a numeric data that will not consist of any, what kind of data? A string or any kind of other data type. So we'll be taking care of either integer or float. 
So array is a function which will create because I have used the concept of list of tuples. So this is one tuple, another tuple. So I've created a simple array. So you can see if I run, so I have got an array which is of size of two into three. It means it's having a two rows and three columns. So 23 and 35 are in the rows. So this is my rows. So this is my row and these are my columns. So this is an array of two into three. So array is a simple function which can create a data set with a NumPy array. Let's say I want to create an array with a user defined value. So what I do, I ask how many values, it's a simple loop, how many you want values you want to enter with a size of an array, created an empty array with a function called empty and executed the loop with the element ARI. So if you see, if I execute this, it will ask me how many elements. I said six. So I'm entering the six elements. So very simple code wherein I'm just entering, creating a NumPy array. You can see on my screen, this is a single dimensional array created with NumPy. Now we have a function called a range. Now what is the a range? It's similar function like your range function, which we use in normal loop, which creates the sequence of the data. So here in I'm writing np dot a range function three comma thirty. It means you generate the value three from three to thirty, so that we can work on that. So I've written here. 3,30. So my array is generated. I can write another parameter with 3. So it will take a step there. So this is a very simple concept wherein how I can create a data set with some numeric value. Then I have used another library called random with a numpy. So I have written here numpy random dot random. Because if I really want to see how numpy array works, so I need a data set. So I have created a random number data set with reshaping into five into four. So you have seen here that I have written random dot random, which is a function to get a random values from 17 to 500 with a step value of 20. So it will create the random element. It will give you a single dimensional array. It will give you a single dimensional array with some values and I reshaped it to five into four. So it's like this way. So you can see here, I have used this. So now what? What kind of functions of statistics I can do? Let's say this is my two dimensional array and I'm writing round C dot STD. It means I just want a standard deviation of the whole data. So I just need to write C dot standard deviation comma two. Comma two means decimal places, two up to damage, two decimal places. When I say mean, so I get a mean, variance, sum, max, bin. So you can see how simple to get the typical statistical functions in a single line code, which is very tough to calculate in a statistical manual. So you can see the this process can be used by the Indian Statistical Organization, wherein they have a huge data and they want these kind of calculations. Now pandas, as you say, so this was a small introduction of NumPy, how NumPy works, you can explore more and more information about NumPy. I hope NumPy is clear to everyone. So it's very simple NumPy. So I take a quick feedback for NumPy. Are you good with NumPy? Say yes, no. So I just introduced the concept of NumPy. So we got 15 responses to us. They says that yes, they are clear with the NumPy concept. And those who are not clear, Dipali, Sweta, and Sai Pranavi Kuli. 
so you may ask the question dipali ma'am and sai parnavi and shweta ma'am at the land so what the problem in numpy and ak sir is ak sir or ma'am i don't know so we got 27 response where in 22 people says yes it's good to be work with a numpy library and there are so many functions we stick to the curriculum teachers it's a request don't go beyond the curriculum for students don't think that they can understand these concept very easily we up see the sample paper prepare the student according to the sample paper don't think that whatever the knowledge you have you can just deliver to them they won't be able to understand since it is a skill subject i always request teachers to make paper simple because we want student to know the concept so that's why skill subject is being introduced that if they want to go further they can learn more so it's just introduction to the artificial intelligence do not make the paper which is very tough make the paper simple as similar to the cbse sample paper great people have understood the concept thank you so much now let's continue with the pandas so pandas again you need to install pandas i need to say pip install pandas so pandas have two concept series and data frame when i say series series is a one dimensional array and when i say data frame it is a two dimensional array kind of like as i said pandas contains of like spreadsheet data which is my data now what is the series as i said it is a one dimensional array containing sequence of values of any data type that can be int float list or string which by default numeric data label starting from zero the data label associated uh, sorry with... to interrupt you sir but you are not sharing the screen oh sorry sorry sir Thanks. I hope it is visible now. Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay, great. So, when I say pandas, so I need to write. First thing is I need to install because it's an external library not available with Python. So I need to write pip install pandas. Once I have installed pandas, then what I need to do? I need to import like I have imported what numpy. So I said import pandas as pd and pd is my alias name or I can say object which will help me to get all the methods available with pandas library. A series is a one dimensional array containing sequence of value which can be float, list, string and which have a numeric data label starting from zero by default and label associated with a particular value called index. So this is what I have created a simple series. There is no example of series creation in the book. So you can learn for your knowledge, not to implement in the practical way, not to show to the student. I hope it is clear to everyone. I hope it is clear to everyone. Now, so L equal to, I have created a list, a simple list, and there is a method called series and the S of series is capital. So I have written A equal to PD dot series L. So I can write a list here and I can create a dictionary. So I, it's a very simple. And so there is a name error because I have not executed the statement PD. So it's showing me the error. So I'll say again. So you can see these are called values and these are called index. So a series consists of and index value and these are called values. So by default, it starts from zero, which I can change as well. So herein I have created series with name as a key, which is the index and subject, subject as a key and name as a value. So you can see here, I have created one list which consists of five subjects and name of the functions. And I'm using same method series, but now I am passing two parameters. First, name of the list for which I need to create a series and the index, which is a keyword calling method 
for function calling. So I'm using an index for keyword calling and write an error subject. And I just displayed the data. I don't read the print statement because it is a Jupyter notebook. So I'll run and my key will be created. My series will be created. Now, as we have understood the concept of NumPy array, so from NumPy array as well, I can create a series. So I write PD dot series. This is a function, and herein I have created a. I've created PD dot series, NP dot array, 134, 223, and this is what my series is created from the NumPy. Again, I have used the tuple to create a series. So these are the different ways I can create a series from NumPy array, from normal tuple, from list. Now, how to work with data frame? So a data frame can also be created from NumPy array. So herein I'm showing an example wherein I've created three single dimensional arrays, array one, array two, array three. I have created three. So I've imported both the libraries because I'm using NP array from the NumPy and pandas for creating a data frame. So I've created here three single dimensional arrays, which I'm passing to the data frame method which is PD dot data frame D and F are capital. And I've written here list and I'm giving a column as an index value. So when I am having a data frame, so we have a row index and a column index. So which we both can specify. So here and I'm not specifying the row index. So automatically what will happen, it will create a row index as 0, 1, 2, but I've given a column index as call one, call two and call three. So my two dimensional data frame is created. Again, all the function which we have done with NumPy can work with data frame. So PD itself have all these functions. Pandas library is also having, because NumPy is, uh, Pandas is, uh, you can say, superset of NumPy. So once you install date Pandas, so NumPy automatically comes into the picture. So it's a superset. All the functionality of NumPy is available in Pandas. Now, using list of dictionary. When I say using list of dictionary, so it means I am having a list which consists of a dictionary, having a dance music. You know the concept of. You know the concept of dictionary which have certain keys and a values. So I have added few values with dictionary with a different values. So you know the update function, wherein it will be updated. So I've just written this and I've created another data frame. So this is my data frame wherein my class is a row index and my subject as a column index and which consists of NAN, not a number. So NAN is a blank, like a null in SQL, null, so the NAN is that is a missing value actually, which we need to clean up with giving some zeros or a mean value of painting, painting number. So this is what NAN, wherein a discrepancy in a data, which cannot predict it, which cannot be analyzed. So we need to clean up. So I have added these kind of values intentionally so that I can explain you how we can fill the NAN values in a pandas. Another example given in a book, wherein I have created because I just scanned this and I have interpreted. So this is my another data frame, which is given in a big book. Herein, what I am doing, this is given an example in a book. But if you see the book, the name is not there. It's showing like this way. It's the, in the book, it's showing the data frame like this way, wherein name, math, sub and subjects are the keys and name of the students are column index. So you can see here different rows and column index. But I have created my data set with this way. This is a data set. But what I have done, the same data set, I have used df.setIndex as name and used a function called transpose. So whatever the data set I was having, so I have just transposed and it's created the data frame like the book. 
so that I can explain you other function which are available in the book. Now, how to add a column? If you write name of the data frame is result and I just added a name of a people, person and added the library. So this way I can add the live new column. So you can see a new column is added. Now, how to add a row? So there is a function called LOC. I have used dot LOC method. I have written name of the subject and I have added another column. So you can see here, I have added a new column. Now, drop is a function to add, drop a row or a column. If I write x is equal to 0, it will drop what? A row. If I write x is equal to 1, it will drop a column. So drop is a function if you have a data set data frame wherein they, there is some discrepancy in the data you can drop and you can use for prediction. Now, accessing data frame using LOC, that is a label-based indexing and position-based indexing. So you can use the, both the method to access the data from the data set. Now, handling misses, missing data. How to handle? So there are multiple methods. So I just written here result dot is null dot any. So I'm just checking out whether my data consists of any NAN or not. So you can see Amrita, Rose and Fatima is containing some null values. So how to fill? So I have written here result dot fill NAN 98. So whatever NAN is there, just fill with 98. You can see here the 98 value is being filled in the data frame. So that is the purpose of using or filling the cleaning the data with a predefined value or a you can check whether its data has having a null values or not. So this is what again I have just transposed and I'm showing you some of the other functions of the so if I need to display the index I can write the index. If I need to display the columns, I can do columns, result dot D type, result dot values, which will display this uh, Python note. I'll share with you all so that you can refer to this as a PDF file at the, at the end of the session. So displaying the data type of each column. So I can write this result dot D type and I can change the data type. Sometimes I need to change the data type as well. So you can see here all this data is available to me all these values, numpy array, name, so all these things. Last, I will explain head and tail function. If you need top five rows, top three rows, you can use head and tail function, top and bottom. Because the, my major focus is on skit learn. I want to cover that in ex extensively, so I just cover in a faster way, how pandas work, how can you work, I'm again requesting teachers, this is just for your reference because I've used something more certain extra functions in pandas as well. Be strict to the curriculum. Don't go with beyond the curriculum. It's just for your reference. You cannot impose your knowledge to the students. It's just a request. Now, comma separated values. So as you know, CSV files. So I'll go back to my presentation and I'll say comma separated values because whenever you need a, some data set for working with a data set, you need to go to certain website and all the artificial data, artificial intelligence data sets are available on various websites like Kegel, Sigma, openml.org or data.gov.in. So first of all, you need a data set which you need to clean using a pandas library and then you can further go with a skit learn library to identify certain things. So this is what uh, a comma separated value. I hope it is clear to everyone now how to import. So a simple function read underscore CSV. What is a simple function? I just need to import a library, import pandas as pd, 
and I just have to download. So this is a data set which I have downloaded from governmentdata.gov.in. So this is a data which talks about the cross enrollment ratio between 2013 to 22nd of the toilets available across India. So this is the state, this is the year, this is the primary toilets. So this is the government data which we can analyze how government is progressing. So this data consists of 110 rows with the 14 columns. You can see. And it's very simple to download the data from any date, date website which I have explained to you. So this is my data. And this is, these are the, I've used the columns. So df.columns and this is my data. And I can use the pandas concepts like here in I've used one other object which says df.stateut, comma u unique. So it's showing me unique states of that particular column. So how many length is 110? Selecting column base, so I can write the column names and I've used the concept of slicing. So all my data will be available. I hope it is clear the CSV and the pandas. So here in I can open a I can take one or two portion if you have any questions. So I can just open a session for asking the question. So you can write in the PowerPoint only. I'll just if you have any one or two question I can take. So so in the yes. chat section there are two questions. Uh, okay. One Bhubi ma'am is asking how to use row index and one Gita ma'am is asking what is the LOC method? As I said, one is a label based and one is a row based, label based and index based. So both are different function to access the data. So if you want to go with in row uh, index based, you will use ILOC. And if you use LOC, it, you will use label based. It means you will be using LOC function. It was written in the uh, uh, Jupyter notebook. Okay. So now let's come to the picture of a skit learn library. So can you provide detailed explanation? How, what do you understand by skit learn? You write yourself. Let's see what knowledge you have of, of skit learn library. So you may write the two lines, three lines for skit learn. Let's see what do you know about skit learn so that we can start. It is used for Smitha Ma'am has written. Thank you, Smitha Ma'am. No idea about topic, machine learning, library. We need more responses. It's library used for machine learning. No idea, scientific apps, machine learning, free and open source Python library. All the Python libraries are free only. No idea. So, so many people, it's a library for machine learning, great. Commonly used for data analysis, ML regression. It's a powerful ML library, data mining and data analysis, great. Image recognition is one of the example of uh, machine learning, skit learn. We can implement LM, ML algorithms, training and testing the data. Yes, Preeti ma'am. So, few people have an idea, few people don't have an idea how Skitlearn library works. So, it's a open source, Python is an open source. So, this is a library which we can use for testing the data actually. So, we got 20 responses. Great. So I'll just insert. Thank you so much for your responses. Now. Now what is a Skitlearn library? When I say Skitlearn, so I'll go a little slow from here. So Skitlearn machine learning library, powerful library for building and evaluating machine learning model. So if you say it's a library which helps you to evaluate the machine learning model. 
it can use classification and regression and it can predict category of continuous value it can do the clustering group or similar data points into cluster so that is what a skit library if you see the figure first we need to collect the data then we need to model the train training the model and then we can do certain things so that is what a skit learn a library which is an open library to add the few people to work with data now skitlearn provides variety of models it means this library because when you talk about uh, artificial intelligence we have a uh, different types of data supervised data unsupervised or semi supervised data so we have a variety of data to analyze these kind of variety of data we need a library which is a skitlearn library and nowadays people use some other tools which is a part of the syllabus as well orange or a tableau we people use for this but but if you want to do a coding if you want to code it for predicting something or clustering or supervised learning or unsupervised so skitlearn is the library now what are the key features simple api api consistent interface for all machine learning models it means it cater to all the machine learning models so different purpose we have a different models so skitlearn can handle all these kind of models pre processing tools scaling the data encoding feature and selection and data preparation and then we can do cross validation matrix access the model and performance now what model will you use when you are doing a uh, uh, programming for machine learning let's say you have supervised learning data so you can use regression classification time series so these are the algorithms which you can use linear regression is majorly used then you can use decision tree rainforest random forest super vector machine so all these are the models which you can use for training your data and getting a prediction if you have a database unsupervised learning so you can use k means db scan principal component analysis or gaussian mixture model so if you have unsupervised learning data so you can use this now model evaluation so skitlearn provides tool for model selection and validation such as cross validation grid search randomized search confusion matrix and matrix prediction which is again a part of confusion matrix is a part of the curriculum as well choosing the right choosing the right model when you choose regression when you choosing a right model you are use a regression for continuous output if you see my screen for continuous output you are going to use regression model which model regression model if you have binary or multi class tasks then you will be using using classification clustering k means dimensionality reduction you are going to use psa or tsne so you can use a different model for different kind of data now let's understand the example given in a book so there is a data set called iris data set which is given in the example as a in a book what is that iris data set so i'll just show you some of the background of this data set and then we'll go further so the background of this data set is so this is my data set which is first given in the 19 so this is the information about iris data set index of iris first it was given in 1996 then 1993 so this is what the data given and what is the data behind this so this is a data behind this you can see iris plant database was given adopted in september 21 by ca blake added discrete information then it was updated by r a fisher so this is a detailed data set given now what is this iris what we need to do, do with this like you know this is a three kind of data these are three kind of flowers available in the amazon forest so i need to find out which kind of flower it is so how we i want to identify we need to identify using a petal and a sepal so according to the petal and sepal we want to 
analyze the data and we want to predict ki which flower it is. Is it as a iris setosa, iris versicolor or iris virginia? So according to the data set given to the training model, we need to check what data set, what kind of flower it is. So we are giving two features, which is the one petal length and the sepal. So if you see my data set, so this was my data set. You can see here, sepal length in centimeter, sepal width in centimeter and petal. And what we need to classify, we need to class is setosa, versicolor and virginia. And in this data set, missing attribute values was none. So this is a simple example summary of the statistics. What is the minimum? What is the maximum minimum? And standard deviation of whole data, which is given to us. And class distribution is 33.3% of each classes is given to us. And then we are an analyzing the data. So this is what the concept of IRIS data set, which is available within a Scikit-learn library itself. I don't need to download this IRIS data from the internet. It's there in the library only. So if I write a method called load underscore iris, the whole data set will be available to me and I can write the code to check whether this data model check the values, whether it can predict whether it is a versicolor or virginica, what kind of flower it is. So this is what we are going to do now. The code is written in the book is a, a little uh, so this is the code again you need to install a library called skitlearn what is the code pip install skitlearn is a lamb of the library you need to install and I have, I have installed another library because this data set is available on UCIL repo website so I just downloaded for my reference. So I have used this library as well. You know not to do that. This is a code given in the book. Wherein we are talking about different portion, different line of code is given. Now, whenever you are training some data, you need to check how much percentage you want to match. 80%, 20%, 70%, 30%, the training model and the data set. So this is a code which is checking out if I run this code, there are two, three uh, errors in the code given in the book. You may correct. We will update in the next version. So you see, if I run this code, it will predict me what kind of data I am giving. So this is my data. I am giving the sample data as 5532, which is in a centimeter, the petal length and sepal length in centimeter height and width. And I'm checking out what is this? So it's saying that the first data is, what is the first data? It's saying the first data, the first flower is versicolor and the second is a virginica and accuracy is 1%. It means that accuracy of the data which I have given to the machine learning code, it's showing me the accuracy as well as what kind of. So what I can do, I can change the data. I can see what percentage is changed. Let's say I change this data and I say what prediction it do. So you can see here the prediction is changed to setosa. So the flower is the according to the sample data I've given, I checked with my training data and compared it. What data comparing? I'm comparing with the 80%. Where is it written? Here it is written. So I'll explain this code that how this code, so the, here it is written, test size is 20%. So let's understand this code, how it works. So I'm just referring to the book only. I'm just, I'm having my own explanation as well. So this is my own explanation, which is, which I'm going to share with you all. So importing the data site library. So the first two lines talk about what we need. We need a skit learn data set and import load iris. So there is an already available data set called iris. So this is what we are doing. Again, we have already explained what is this program going. Now, defining the feature. So X axis is my iris data and Y is my target. So extract the feature of X metric from the data set, which consists of measurement of the flower, which is my sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. 
And what is my Y? Y is which contains of the species label, which is my 0, 1, 2. So I have marked my flower into three numbers, 0, 1, 2. So first of all, we need to see the data and then we need to compare. Now splitting the data into the training and the test. So in this code, I'm comparing whatever the data. So this is my X train, X test, Y train, Y test. So I've created four variables. I'm getting split the data into four parts with test size as 0.2, which means 20% of the data set. So I've just passed X train, Y train data, which will use. So what is my X train, Y train? So which, which I have given one and two. So you can see here, this is my data, which I'm using it. And there is a predefined data. Now initially, which model I'm using, because I have explained you the model. According to the data set, you need to use a model. So I am here, what I'm doing, I'm just clustering. I'm just clustering the data. So I'm using the K nearest neighbor model, which talks about K neighbor classifier N and the neighbor equal to three. So this is a model which I'm using and it is fitting to show me the accuracy of the model. This I'm using for accuracy. You can see a Y prediction and Y prediction. So it's prediction me in the Y, the Y prediction was because I'm using 0, 1, 2 as my number for the flower. So I'm using this and you can see here for matrix. So I have explained you which model and the accuracy. So matrix is a website in library which shows me the model accuracy. So uh, this line is missing in the code in a book. So you can add it. And then we have making predictions. So this is what a simple exercise given in the book, which I have shown you. If you change the data set, it will tell you what kind of flower it is, what kind of species of the flower it is. Is this Setosa or Virginica? So this is an example given in a book only. So you can refer to the book. Now, I hope uh, people understood the purpose of this code, which is available within a machine library. So I can just take a quick feedback. I'll take a quick feedback. I hope this is clear. Those who are already teaching must be clear to them. Those who are not teaching or learning. So that's a simple exercise given that how data set and models can be used. We got 16 responses. Sir, we are 19. getting many yeses in the uh, chat section also. Great. So let's talk about how all three things, pandas, numpy, and the scikit-learn model can help us to predict with our own data. So I've added one more data set which I have created. Thank you so much for uh, saying yes. So I am going back to my code window. So this is the data set which I have created myself. So how you can explain this concept? So I've used import numpy as library pandas and these are the things which I'm using. So this is a sample data wherein I am what I'm doing key component, data size, which is having a size, number of bedroom, house of age and features to predict the house prices in the long run. If this is the data set and the model which I am using is a linear regression to predict the prices. Training and data set is testing using a train test split and evaluation is mean squared error method I've used for checking the accuracy. So how I have created a data set, you can see here, First of all, I have created a dictionary wherein I'm having four components, size, number of bedroom, the age and the price. So I have having, uh, I'm having a four column index and some values. I am having a dictionary. So I have created here a data frame. Then I have added up columns as this and praying a different prices. So you can see here my uh, answer I'm not printing this data frame. So I can write here print 
df so my data frame will be printed so i'm explaining you you can create your own data set and check for the different values so this is a very simple data set which consists of small data and predicting the house prices now this is my data this is showing a price now x train x test as similar we have done train test split x axis and y axis with x and y we are taking from the data frame which we have i have created then what is the test size we are taking now 70 30 30 is for training and then this is the parameter and the model which i am using linear regression fit x train y train and then i am predicting the house prices in the long run so this is what a simple example which we can create our own data frame and we can use this method to work with. So I have used all three libraries. I have used Pandas, Kitlan, it's a simple program which you can use it. I hope that helps you to learn more on this. It's only for teacher reference. If your students are good, you can explain more. Otherwise, stick to the curriculum again strict to the curriculum. There was a time and I used to think that we need to give whatever we know, we need to give to the students. Now, this is not the time, whatever you know. In 11th, you can give them as much as you can. But in 12th, be strict to the curriculum only. Now, let's talk about a few more examples of the projects. So, project ideas for machine learning house prediction. So, I have already created but this is the house prediction data set is available on <coughs> Kaggle. As I've already explained, you can download the data set. You can use the regression model, decision tree or anything, and you can predict the price. Then stock price prediction is there. So you can predict the size. Data set is on Yahoo Finance. Model, you can use time series and technical indicator. What you can do, future stock prices based on the historical data, volumes, data. So this data set is available. So you can write your own code. Customer churn prediction. Again, this is a telco customer churn. So this is again a data set available on the Kaggle. You can do. So all these projects, you can use the data set are available on the different website. Healthcare outcome prediction. Predict patient outcome, which is risk of heart disease and diabetes based on the medical data. So these all are the examples of projects which student can do using a Skitlearn. And here I end my session for technical purpose. Now, what we have learned. So efficient numerical computation to pass data, we use NumPy, Pandas for data manipulation and pre-processing of model training, and Skitlearn for evaluating training and evaluating the machine learning. So that is all together these three website works. Now I'll open session for Q&A and you can write Q&A and thank you for joining the session. So at the same time, we'll take a chat window question and you can write your short answer, your feedback here on class point. You can write how was the session. You can write on this and in a two minutes, we'll take Q&A from the Zoom chat window. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining this session. I hope, Marin, ma'am, I just... Yes, sir. It was a great session, sir. I am sure teachers are, have really got a lot of inputs today. And do share, sir, the resources for them to go through. We will also be sharing the recording later on. So, teachers, if you have any queries, you can unmute yourself and you can ask, sir. Uh, sir, uh, good evening. I have yes. one query. Yes, ma'am. Sir, in the AI curriculum, uh, the latest AI, AI curriculum, in uh, level 1 and level 2, they have not clearly given as to how much in detail we need to do about, uh, you know, list tuple, uh, whether even while loop is not given. And even in level 2, it's not clear how, how much in depth we need to do. So, how, how, how will we cover that? Ma'am, uh, I have already explained it stick to the curriculum for paper point of view. For paper point of view, whatever the book says, the paper will be from that book only. The examiner whomsoever is creating a paper, they will not take any other reference. 
because we don't want to degrade the subject. We want more and more students to learn this. So we want a student should be judged, assessed on the curriculum based parameters only, not with the teacher knowledge. The you knowledge mean to say, uh, you, mean, you mean to say only stick to the CBC textbook. What content is given in the CBC textbook? That much yes. if we teach, it's enough. Yes. For example, if there is a concept of list slicing, let's say. So you can take another list and you can just slice it and show them how it works. But which Similar one functions example, we have to teach is not clear. What? The functions that we have to teach in list, it's not clear about that. So whatever it is written, you do it only that. In the textbook. It whatever it is written in the textbook, only that. Yes, yes. Don't go with any other textbook. Don't okay. go with any other textbook, any more references. Use the Bible as the content given by CBSC because it's being checked by the IBM, it's being checked by the CBSC officials, and the paper setter will take care of this booklet only. Only, only, only uh, questions from the CBC textbook will be asked, right? Yes, ma'am. You can see the CBCS and IP curriculum, or you can see any other curriculum. We always make sure that students should be accessed. With the not not the knowledge of teacher, with the knowledge of curriculum only. CBSE text. So be be uh, strict to that, and it's okay. a request because so many people do the same thing. They teach so many things which is not relevant. I always appreciate the teacher those who strict. Yes, you can do it something better in class eleven because that's your own paper, and it's up to you. You want to make it tough, you want to make it easy, but again, don't degrade the such subject. That's my personal choice, personal suggestion to you. Am okay. I clear, ma'am? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir, if you are talking about the CBSC uh, textbook, so you mean the handbook, I believe. Yes, ma'am. Student okay. handbook. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, sir. Sarita, this side. Ma'am, your voice is not clear. You may ask us a little louder. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Sarita, this side from Gurgaon. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, yeah, sir. As uh, this, uh, just a question was here, uh, actually, uh, according to curriculum, when we are teaching, you know, the, uh, list, dictionary, obviously the concepts are so vast that the newcomers, the new students, those who have not learned the AI or, you know, Python in earlier classes, it's very difficult to make them understand these uh, codes. Okay. Ma'am, uh, a simple question to you. Uh, there are two ways to work learning. I always say there are two ways of learning. One is clearing the paper and understanding the subject. Fine. When you say a student is very brilliant because school education system, they can give AI to any student. And as we say AI for all. So there are certain concepts which can be for the few students only, not for all. Even if you see the other subjects, there are students who are getting 100, there are students who are getting 33 only. So we need to see what's the level of the student and according to we need to give. If you give so much of your knowledge to the student, that will be what will happen? That will not be justified with the student. So give That's it, true. you can, to explain, there are multiple ways to explain the same concept. If they understand, you can give more and more, more example of similar type. Rather than getting, this is a function, this is function, this is dictionary. Give more example, more data set to create a dictionary. So that is my suggestion. Is that clear, ma'am? Right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Even CS and IP, when we started with the Python, we always say strict to a curriculum. Do not impose your own knowledge to the students. I always su suggest this. Being part of uh, so many bodies, so I always suggest people to do this. Right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Mary, ma'am, anything, anything you want to add? add? Uh, that's also, I think, uh, session was great and uh, teachers' queries are also getting resolved now by you, sir. So thank you so much for such a nice session. And teachers, I'm sharing the form for the attendance and feedback. Please fill up, fill it up. And also, I will be sharing the WhatsApp uh, group link. In case you are not there in our WhatsApp group, please join the WhatsApp group as well. I will just share it in the chat section. Naveen, sir, I have a request. Uh, good evening, I'm Sushmita. Just wanted to request you to take another session on the science kit in detail. I, being an IP teacher, I knew the numpies and the pandas, but science kit went pretty fast. So please. Because 
because due to the constraint time i understand so please just keep a specific session only for science kit okay sure definitely we'll plan a session for clean only thank you so much sir because we need to practically implement those codes which you are giving us otherwise we will not be able to understand it properly sure ma'am definitely yeah. thank definitely. you so much sir yeah. sir good evening sir yeah ma'am uh, so my name is kanika from delhi yeah, sir, my concern is regarding the AI projects we are supposed to prepare the children for, especially for uh, class 12. I think so, your voice is mixing with some other voice, so only one person can speak, so it will be better. I think somebody has accidentally uh, switched on the mic. Can you hear me now, sir? Yeah, ma'am, we may ask. So my question is regarding the uh, AI projects for the children. Okay. So earlier, um, before this session, children were, uh, if they are preparing the project in uh, non-coding based apps for AI, yeah. then also it was fine. Yeah, that's that's absolutely fine, ma'am. That's absolutely fine. Fine, fine. even now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. In Python, 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 Python. Ma See, like I'm teaching CS, IP, AI. So if I talk about my students, Take Inter is not in the course, but my 20% of the students use Take Inter. Yes. Fine. So it's up to yes. the student level. They need to submit the project because when we say AI, AI for all, the day before yesterday, our prime minister as well said AI for all, AI for good. So it means AI, we want everyone to should understand up to that level wherein they can suggest some kind of ideas actually which can be implemented. There are coders, there are certain idea makers. Okay. So we want ideas which can be low code, no code kind of environment. They can do some kind of coding and they can go with this kind of environment as well. Fine. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So thank you so much, sir. We can end the session. Teachers, I hope you don't have any other queries. If you have quickly in two minutes, you can ask. Then I will close the session. Thank you so much so for joining the session. Notebook, you will be sharing it. Uh, uh, the Jupyter Notebook, uh, you will be sharing it. I uh, will be sharing the WhatsApp group. All of you join the WhatsApp group, which we have given. So I will be using uh, the Word file and the Jupyter Notebook. Even the PPT, I will share in the WhatsApp group. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, sir. I have one question. Yeah. Yeah, sir. It is regarding that machine learning algorithm. So I just started in class 11. There are some humanities students as well in my class. They yes, are facing that, that a lot, it. a lot of difficulties. That they started saying, "Ki ma'am, about maths is coming there because whenever I need to give some examples, like linear regression is there, and there we have KNN algorithm is there." So I started teaching them with examples. So we try to solve some examples there in class. So they are facing a lot of difficulties in with the formulas and the calculations. So that part I need to discuss with you that how can we help the students? Ma'am, see, I said there are two points. One is clearing the paper and understanding the concept. If they know what is the purpose of that particular library and particular function, that's it. And if you see the paper pattern, we will not be asking that kind of question which will which is not for everyone. If you see any of the CBSC paper, we want everyone should get a good marks. And we want everyone should be able to exist on the learning rather than mathematical function. It's not a mathematics paper. It's an AI paper. So it will be easier for student to do this paper very easily. If they are not able to understand, tell them the usage of AI. Tell them the other chapters. And there are so many things which are there in the book which they can get to know and understand the concept of AI rather than emphasizing on mathematics only concept. It's just our introduction of mathematics. And so we just need to introduce them to the concepts like these algorithms. In yes, 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 ma'am. No need to go in details. If they understand what is K-neighbor method, that's sufficient. They don't need to write a code in the paper wherein I say write a skit learn code with their, this kind of testing and this. Even if it is there, it will be the fill in the blanks only. And similar type of code which is given in the book. Even if some setter will say, you know, I need to check. So that is there in the. Okay, thank you so much, sir. You are not getting any certificate for this these sessions. And uh, Marin, ma'am, somebody is asking bootcamp certificates. I think that's pending. 
This is about Good evening, sir. boot camps. How students can get boot camp certificates. So uh, the students attended the boot camps through us. Can you clarify this, Suruchi, ma'am? Ah uh, yes, ma'am. Ah, uh, ma'am. Actually, no. Actually, it is uh, in the curriculum that students have to uh, get a certificate for the boot camp. Okay. So students are finding it difficult to attend any boot camp. Means from where they can attend the boot camps. IBM, it's clear because it is a website. They go there and they get the certification. Right. But boot camps, they are not able to, uh, you know, get the certificates. So all right. So for these boot camps, um, uh, what we will do, we will also share. uh you know uh boot camps at some institutions we'll put it in the group only for you all to help your students to get into for sure uh, and you also keep an eye because a lot of other organization also give boot camp to these students so they can enroll themselves in those boot camps as well so we will also find out from our end and we'll let you know ma'am right uh, mary ma'am sorry Thank to interfere so actually mm -hmm. boot camps are given by the cbsc uh, people only Like recently, they have launched the boot camp for uh, class ninth and tenth students. Okay. Uh, just today only we got the circular. Yeah. Was, so, uh, ma'am, can you share the circular? One. Circular. That's for ninth, tenth students, ma'am. They keep on having it every year. I think twice a year they have those sessions. And uh, no, it's thrice. Three slots are given. One is in October. One is in November. One is in December. It's a fifteen day slot. Mm hmm. Four to six every day. And uh, that's a boot camp now being launched for class ninth and tenth students. Eleventh and twelfth we are waiting. All right. Because in eleventh so and twelfth, no worries, ma'am. It is ma students that, can join. Yeah. yeah, the students can join that boot camp also because advanced concepts are taught over there as well. So eleventh so class students they can, can join ninth and tenth also, ma'am. They can join. Okay. But ma'am, seats are limited there. Okay. Seats are very limited, so, so they are not right. able. Yeah, so what limited. we will do, we will also come back to you on the boot camp. front let us see uh and definitely mering ma'am may i answer this yeah yeah um iit madras school connect program which mehreen ma'am has posted in all the whatsapp group maybe we can register our schools for the same they don't have any numbers it's an 8 week online certification program for which the students need to spend around uh, an hour or two uh learning the videos which they will be sending and they'll have one hour live session every week and this would be very helpful for those who would want to pursue ai in future so uh, the thing is um, please go through the link which was sent by mehreen ma'am in the whatsapp groups that is the super ai educators and ai educators and follow that link Yes, that I will share is again. Going to be helpful. Yeah, yes. because I have personally myself not checked that link. So as Samia so ma'am is saying that she has gone through, registered so for you all the can same. yeah we look into that. My students for this. Yes, we have I registered our school for the same for the hmm. upcoming batch. We still have the timeline. We need to get our schools registered by the I'm, end of I'm this month. I am already month. part of that group, and my students are already doing this course. Great, so, great. I Can you please Mary, share? Ma please yeah, yeah, yeah. I will share again. I will today night only. I will share after the session. I will share that. It's a CBSE circular. You can refer to the CBSE circular directly, and there will be a YouTube link. They are explaining what is this all about. Or you can directly go to the IIT Madras data science course name website, and you can browse it. So rather, I will request other teachers also. If at all you come across such kind of boot camps, you can please share in the group for others also to and attend and exercise. join. It's a paid exercise. It's a five hundred rupees for eight weeks. Okay, for uh, Madras eight. one, right? Yes, IIT Madras. So, uh, okay. so if this IIT Madras uh, boot camp is it uh, fully online or the student need yes, to fully online? Yes, fully, fully online. Fully online. For the felicitation, they are going to call the students in the month of January or. February or November, December. But sir, excuse me. Ah, uh, what did they want? One letter to be signed from the school uh, side, that to be uploaded, yes, right? Yes, ma'am. They will register. Yes, they yes. will give you one email ID. They, uh, that's the per. They want to register yes. school only. I think we need. There is a sample list. format of letter which is given, which you'll have to fill in with your school details. Get your principal sign with a school seal and up. 